Welcome. Um, what we're going to be doing in this uh, short video is uh, meeting with Mary O'Brien, uh, a key member of Bromber Evangelical Church, and we're going to find out a little bit about her experiences as she uh, recently uh, had COVID-19. So how did that affect her? How did she know she had it? Uh, and how did she manage to pull through? So uh, let's meet Mary. There we go. Um, so Mary, hello. Hi there. Uh, where are you from? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Right, well, I'm originally from Bridlington in East Yorkshire. Um, came over to Chester, to Chester College as it was then, to train to be a teacher. Um, and then when I qualified, um, I actually got a job over here and that's where I've stayed. I've got married. I'm married to Neil. I have three daughters, um, 21 year old, a 19 year old and a 15 year old. Um, and we live in Elton. Um, normally when not lockdown isn't, isn't happening, I spend my days um, doing housework, which I sort of really like, which is a bit sad. <laughs> Uh, baking, um, <laughs> looking after the family. Um, I go over to my dad's quite a bit because he's not too good at the moment. He's, he's quite elderly and needs lots of um, family support. Um, and I do stuff in the church. I help with various things that are there as well, which needs preparation time at home. Okay, so you, you recently had COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, how did you know you had it? Um. We were sat watching the television Sunday evening and I felt this sort of weird um, tightness across the top of my chest and my throat. Um, and I started having a little sort of a, a piffly, silly cough. Um, I don't normally get coughs. The only times I've had an actual cough is when I've had the flu. Um, I know some people get coughs and what have you, but I, I don't. So I thought, mm, that feels a bit weird. Um, didn't say anything to anybody, but um, sort of tried to keep my distance a little bit during that evening, just in case. Um, and then the following morning, I woke up with an absolutely stonking headache. Oh, it was so painful. Um, quite a painful throat um, and painful ribs as well. Um, and I went downstairs to say, I really don't feel well. And then to get back upstairs, I got really breathless, which was a bit bizarre because I'm a fairly fit person I go cycling and um, climb mountains so being breathless was was really unusual for me mm. climbing the stairs but, running out of breath climbing <laughs> the stairs doesn't quite fit with mountains does it no it doesn't I thought yes this, this, there's something not right here um so I I, I looked up online um, um and uh, checked the symptoms because there's so many different symptoms there's so many different ways people start with this um and there's not a one size fits all unfortunately so I sort of ticked some of the symptoms that were the initial start of it. And one of one thing that kept people kept asking me is, well, have you got a temperature? No, I didn't have a temperature throughout. I, it went up slightly. Um, I was being monitored by one of my daughters with the uh, thermometer. Mm. I'm sure it was just because she kept like sticking it in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> um, from when they were children, it's an old thing we found in the cupboard. It might not be accurate, but I didn't feel really hot or anything at all. Mm. It was just it was just the cough, the breathlessness, and, and the sore throat and the aching around my chest and ribs and, and my head. That were my um, yeah. That there was the initial um, symptoms that I thought yes, this this is something not nice. So what was how did that week progress then what, what were your symptoms as, as the week went on um well they sort of they sort of changed daily really so um the breathlessness sort of continued um especially going up and down the stairs um the sore throat sort of went um i still had this silly cough um but for me it was the aching body it was incredible um I've got a, I can ache when I've, you know, climbed a mountain or something like that or, or gone too far on my bike. That, that sort of muscle ache, it wasn't like that. It was like deep inside mm. and it was, oh, it was incredibly painful during the week. But, and all you can take is paracetamol um, and drink loads. Um, I, um, because of the sort of person I am, I like to find out exactly what's wrong with me <laughs> and what I can do to help. Not, not in a sort of hypochondriac sort of way, but I just like yeah. to be informed. Um, and that I then realised that this aching um, was um, all part of it. So I thought, right, okay, just have to get on with that then. Um, I lost my taste as well of, of food. Everything just felt either warm or cold in my mouth. Um, and tea and coffee didn't really taste of anything either. 
um, and that sort of went on for the whole week. Um, and then towards the end of the week, um, I started feeling really, really tired. I had been tired. I was sleeping lots anyway, but um, I just felt completely exhausted even after being up out of bed for about an hour. So I was sleeping absolutely loads. Um, and again, the aches continued um, virtually for the whole of the week. And I remember we spoke to you, I think, I think it was towards the end of that week. You, you were literally short of breath as you were speaking. It was uh, yeah. the, the simplest yeah. of things were, were, were really quite difficult. Yeah, and I, apparently I looked absolutely awful. Um, I wasn't I, going to say that. that, that <laughs> rude, but, I, I um... thought I didn't look too bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but somebody spoke to me the other day and she said, oh, you, you were really, really ill. I said, oh, what was it? I know, I only had a mild dose of it. She said, oh, no, no, so-and-so said you look dreadful. So, oh, right, thank you. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I did feel absolutely grotty, but yeah, it was, um, I, I, I just took it as being part of it and, and, and tried yeah. not to focus on what could happen. Um, so let's talk about what could happen. Obviously, it is a, it's a dangerous and, and uh, it's an awful illness. How did you, we've spoke about how you felt physically, but how did you feel emotionally? Um, very weepy. Right from the beginning, I was very weepy. Um, at the back of my head, I knew, even though that my symptoms were mild, and from what I'd been reading, which isn't always helpful, um, that it could progress and, and get a lot worse. And... Um, I I'm sort of each day, you know what's going to happen each day because they can give you a daily breakdown. Um, so I sort of knew if I got to Saturday and I was, wasn't sort of coughing and and fighting for breath more than I had been, I, I, would, I would be sort of all right. Um, but emotionally, I was I was very um, up and down, um, especially when I couldn't. You just want a hug, don't you, when you're ill, and you just want somebody to hold your hand and. But of course, we couldn't do that. Everybody was staying away from me. I was not allowed to touch anything. And then when I had, it was all wiped down. So it felt like complete <laughs> leper, as it were, which I suppose it is in a way, isn't it? You have to keep the social distance from the rest of the family. Um, so even within a, a family of five, I still felt isolated and lonely um, and still try, sort of trying to put a brave face on it for the, for the girls and, and for Neil and, and trying not let them think I'm worrying because if they knew I was worrying then they'd worry even more probably but yeah, yeah. so um yeah just, just emotionally up and down and yeah that, that's the best way to describe it really um I'm not sure how to ask this really um or even whether to um, did you did you fear dying um No. Um, as some of you who know me um, know, I've got um, a family history of something in, in, that I am at risk of getting. Um, so I've always been sort of mentally prepared that I may get that and that's when, when my time might be up. Um, I didn't fear dying as such. I felt that it might come too quickly. <laughs> Yeah. I, and, and the method and, and that knowing that people were very isolated and lonely uh, that you know in the hospital ward without the family I think I think it was more that was more frightening to me than actually the, the dying itself um that, that at the time I, I didn't I didn't fear the death it was more how and being alone at that point um, and leaving everybody, them not being able to be near me, was I think more of a concern in my mind. We're meant to be together. You know, we're meant to be in families. Um, we're not made for social isolation. How did you get through? What pulled you through? What pulled me through? Um, my God, pulled me through. <laughs> when I started that the first Sunday evening, as I said, I sort of kept that to myself, and I just prayed that um, if I was, if I did have it, that I would have um, the Lord would give me um, the peace and um, the, the mental and, and physical strength just to, to get through it. If, if that was what I was meant to happen, um, I um, had been listening to Darren 
um, through the daily reflections and the sermons we've been getting. And there's quite a number of verses that were coming to mind. The Sunday, I think it's before the lockdown was announced, but we weren't allowed to meet in church. There was one verse that Darren preached on. And I'm just going to look away because I'm going to read it. Um, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. And that's from the Psalms. And I, I've, I've printed that off on that day. Um, and that's what kept me going. I knew the Lord would give me the strength and he would give me the peace. Whatever would happen, I would, I would, he'd be with me and it'd be part of his plan for my life and the, the life of my family. Um, and that um, in those dark times at night when you, you feel absolutely grotty and you can't hold somebody's hand and ask for a hug, I, I just prayed that the Lord would, would, would ooh, the Lord would be with me, and I did feel that presence and that hub holding and his comforting arms around me. And I knew people from the church were praying as well. And being in a prayer meeting where people are praying for you to be healed is absolutely amazing. Um, and being able to go back the following week and say, "Yes, God did heal me," um, is equally amazing as well. So, um, just having known the Lord was with me, knowing that He would give me the strength. To get through whatever um, was going to happen either way either to, to be physically restored or to um to to actually go to be with him i, I knew um he was with me and I, I just had to ask and he was there um and i, I really felt that during that week yeah, it's lovely um uh, quite often in, in such circumstances, somebody might say, my faith pulled me through. You haven't said that at all. You've said the Lord pulled you through uh, and you've given all the credit and the the, um, the recovery uh, and it is all down to him and, and what he has done for you. Mm. Uh, it was his sense of presence and so on. It, it's all about what the Lord has done for you that is, uh, that is shining through in what you're saying. Um, so when you're at your weakest, your lowest ebb, um, it's his strength and his peace that's come to you. It's absolutely beautiful. That is beautiful. So um, what would you say to somebody else who uh, perhaps doesn't have it, but is worried about what happened, what ha might happen if they did? Or, or maybe somebody who actually already has it and ha is going through the kind of the physical and emotional uh, turmoil that you went through. What would you say to them? Um not panic um you look for information um but don't overlook um try and ignore all the if i can say it, negative it it's very i don't mean that by belittling that the numbers of people who died don't please don't get me wrong but the media f seems to focus on on that side of things and there are many many people who have survived this um so look look for information which will help you um to sort of support what you're feeling with your symptoms, um, look for medical advice as well, but also um, turn to God, um, just pick up a Bible, um, look through the Psalms, particularly they're, they're, they're full of um, uh, words which will comfort and strengthen, and you can claim those words for yourself if, if you turn to God and ask him and trust him for yourself. Um, I would have got through this with, without knowing that was God was with me. I, I might, might, might have done, might not have done, I don't know. But um, having that um, sense of presence with me and knowing that he was there to turn to when I did feel alone, when there was nobody else to turn to, um, I really believe um, helped me through it. And um, both physically and emotionally, um, you know, to get me to where I am today. So yeah, I'd, I'd say take the medical advice, read up about symptoms and stuff like that so you, you know what to expect and how you can help yourself, but, but turn to God. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Mary, thank you very much for everything that you, you've done there. It's been um, hugely uh, encouraging uh, to, to hear how the Lord himself was your, your strength um, and how he carried you through. It's also really brilliant to... to uh, to know that you are better uh, and that when tops and jam and all these other things get going again uh, you're going to be there fighting fit with us so uh, we look forward to that uh, whenever that way it may be um, in the meantime if anybody uh, watching this would like to follow up on some of the things that mary said uh, you're very welcome to talk to me you're welcome to get in touch with mary too uh, you can do that through the facebook 
page, the church Facebook page, uh, and we'll give you the, the relevant contact details that way. Or, or you can drop us uh, an email, get in touch through the website uh, and do it that way as well. All right, thank you for watching. I hope it's been a real uh, blessing and pleasure to you.